Hi, this video would help you understand what are different kind of logs we have in Kubernetes and then what all can be done to process them. So stay till the end. This is Nipendra Khare, founder of Cloudiga. So what are logs? They are kind of written records of events or operations in a computer system. So for example, in this case, we have an application and this application can spit out its generic logs in the STD out and errors in the STD error. Now we can collect all of these logs and then process them to find out if there is any issue. Logs help us debug issues, record any authorized or unauthorized access and much more. Log management is very critical piece in the modern IT management with DevOps and SREs. It cannot be ignored. In Kubernetes, we scale up and scale down our applications with pods. We move those pods to different machines and so on. So we need some kind of Kubernetes native solutions which can understand and correlate between the pods and the nodes and the applications what we have on them. And we are going to list down some of these solutions later in this particular video and the blog there. On this particular image, we also see few other components. One is an agent on every machine. Then we have some kind of centralized logging backend and then some form of visualization there. We are going to run the agent for logging on every node somehow. Now these agents collects the log and then these agents are going to forward those logs to the centralized location. In that we can store them, we can index them and perform searches and some kind of other analysis on top of them. Then we have some kind of tools for visualization like Grafana, Kibana. With that we can create the nice graphs. So now with this basic understanding, let us now trigger our lab and then see how we can collect the logs from our applications which we are running inside the Kubernetes pod. Our lab has now come up and we have a single load Kubernetes cluster ready with us. Now we would deploy an application with the name of web app. Now as our pod has come up, if we run the kubectl logs command with our pod name, we can see its logs here. So these are the logs which we are getting from our application which is nothing but nginx. Now in some cases when you have a pod with multiple containers, you can run the command like this in which we are defining the kubectl logs command, then the pod name and then we can use this minus c option and then give the respective container name. So if my pod has containers with the name of c1 and c2, to get the logs of the c2 container, we would run the command kubectl logs my pod name minus c and the c2 here and this way I am going to get the logs of the c2 container. On the Kubernetes node, we know that we have the kubelets and the kubelets are responsible for running the pods on the respective nodes. And if I go to slash where log the pods folder, we can see all of the pods there. And under this particular folder, we are going to find out the std out and std error logs of each container. So for example, if I go into one of the folder here. Let me go to let's say default web app. So default is the namespace here and our application name here. And here we are going to find out our container name and inside that we can see the log file which would contain the logs which we have seen previously. There is also a where log containers folder which is nothing but the sim link to the content of where log pods folder here. 
So hope all of this makes sense. Now once we have done that, next part is we are going to look at the node level logs. So we saw the application logs earlier. Now to collect the node level logs, we need to collect few things. On a given node, we are going to have the kernel logs, the systemd logs and other OS logs, which we have to collect and send to the centralized server to further processing. With the command of journal CTL, I'm going to find out all the kernel and the system D level logs here. So as you can see here, I can see the kernel level logs here. And then if I come down, I can see all the system D logs as well. We can find out the logs of a specific system D service with the command like this journal CTL minus FU kubelet. This is going to give me all the logs of the kubelet component on the system or the kubelet system D process on the system. Then for each application, like for example, Nginx, we are going to have those logs as well, which are going to be under the where log folder. And in this, I can see Nginx folder. So here I'm going to find out all the Nginx access and the error logs here. So all of these are important logs, which we have to collect at every node level and whatever the node agent we are going to put up, that agent should be able to collect these system logs as well, along with the containers or the pod logs, which we have seen earlier. The next one here is the cluster level logging. So we already covered the application logs and the node logs. Now, as we are going to run our control plane components as the pods under the cube system namespace. And if we collect the logs of these pods, we are going to collect the control plane component logs as well. So we are good there. And with the system D logs on every machine, we are going to get kubelet logs anyway. Now, apart from this, we can also collect the Kubernetes events and the audit logs, which can also help us in debugging the issues whenever we face. So as we know, if I have to find out any events, I can find out with respect to the namespace. For example, if I run the kubectl get events command, it's going to give me all the events of the default namespace, which I'm currently in. Then we can also find out the audit logs which you have to configure, of course, we have a separate lab for that. So if you want to try that out, you can go ahead and try out the auditing labs, which can help you configure Kubernetes auditing. And then we should be able to push those logs as well to the centralized log management software, what, whatever we are going to use there. We covered the logging pipeline briefly earlier. Let us now revisit it again. So first of all, we discussed that we are going to have our applications which are running inside the pods. And of course, those applications would be written on some kind of programming languages. Now what we can do is with the help of these libraries like log4j, zap and so on, we can have the predefined format of our log output, which would help us in storing and indexing them in a better way. Then we talked about those logging agents. Now these agents can be agents or can be forwarders. Agents perform some additional operations while forwarder just forward the message as it is. So we have agents like FluentD Logstash and we have forwarders like FluentBit, FileBit and so on. Then we had discussed about those centralized logging management solution, which we also refer as logging platform. Now there are different softwares can be used. Like for example, we can use Grafana Loki, Elasticsearch or Parsible. So all of these are different kind of solutions, which are going to help me store, index and search all the different kind of logging data there. So Grafana Loki, Elasticsearch and Parsible are 
such solutions. Then we have different tool to visualize the data what we have collected and for that we can use software like Kibana and Grafana. So with this video I believe you would have got an idea what all different kind of logs we can collect from the Kubernetes cluster and how we can set up our logging pipeline to collect, store and process the different kind of logs there. So we would be doing further hands-on labs and the videos to cover different kind of solutions. So stay tuned and happy learning.